here it is. Without further ado, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have Lol Overruled, Alex Peter in the building. Hello. Uh, TikTok heartthrob, public defender, loves crime and criminals That's and right. getting them out of <laughs> going to prison and jail. Alex, you're in Los Angeles. Uh, why are you here? Uh, I'm here to reclaim this house uh, for the people. Uh-huh. This uh, McMansion that I am now reclaiming for all the people. That's why I'm here. I'm here to talk about, I mean, I figured I was here to talk about prison abolition and what I do for a living. Yeah. Uh, which is um, represent people uh, who are in a little bit of trouble and uh, yeah. get them out of tough situations as a public defender. A public defender is someone who represents people who think the most important thing- Broke boys. Broke boys, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think the most important thing is to realize that a public defender does not work for the state. A lot of people uh, think that public defenders junction with the prosecution. Actually, a lot of the time it can be a problem and represent they work their buddy buddy with the other side. They're gonna you know blah blah blah. And there's like this reputation sometimes that causes all these problems in representation. But the truth is, public defenders are some of the greatest uh, you know trial attorneys that ever worked and underpaid. And that's where you get the problems that come in. Um, but I could tell you like after a couple years of practice, like you could pay a lot of money to a private and not get and be like, why did I pay $15,000 to this person and, you know, get this horrible outcome. But there's this, you know, court case that enshrines the right to be assigned an attorney, Gideon v. Wainwright, where actually the guy who won that was the incar was Gideon. He was incarcerated and he like wrote all the appeals and it went all the way up and they were like, hey, uh, you should actually have a lawyer when you're going through criminal proceedings because it's really messed up if you don't. And that's kind of where it came from. Are you familiar with international law? in this in this regard at all or no because like a, a lot of countries have like weird ass shit like uh, only so. in terms of admiralty law and sovereign <laughs> citizens no no that's not but i love that yeah, but that's yeah. not what i'm talking about no i meant like were there um examples of this like globally in other countries before it was established in america because like as shitty as like the american criminal justice system is there are certain aspects of the american criminal justice system which is a wholly rotten to the core institution for the most part there are still like weird defenses for like average American citizens that sometimes you'd be surprised you won't get in like other countries that we look at as like developing nation, uh, developed nations that are supposedly much better at protecting civil liberties than the United States of America. I feel like that's one of them is what yeah. I mean. Tr truthfully, I I don't to I don't totally know the answer to that. I will say though that it's almost more not that it's not important in other places but like it's almost more important that it's enshrined in law here because of how bad it is here in terms of we incarcerate so like yeah if you looked at any country almost any country in europe they are incarcerating like and or like you know seven eight times less you know per hundred thousand people than the united states like we are putting so many people in prison that it's like you know it's well and good that it happens in other places that they have these defense mechanisms but here it's like really pivotal yeah no i just meant but, like no it, i don't know i mean like, I, I, I know just, about the history not every country will have like public <laughs> yeah, yeah. defenders for example yeah, yeah, which yeah. is like actually a good thing even though it doesn't matter because the american criminal justice system is still fucking the objectively the worst on the planet with like i don't know with i guess exceptions to like uh <laughs> military tribunals which we have here as well so that's sure. even worse than the current like in the than the civilian uh criminal course that we have but yeah i was just thinking japan for the most part was because like you were there and you were committing crimes no well i wish because i just want to live there but uh no their <laughs> their their criminal system is really weird uh-huh i don't they, know I don't they, know they much will about it. they will like basically torture you into into a plea before there's any sort of like i think before i mean they have like a 99 percent conviction rate wow i mean so we kind of do that here in a way i mean like pre-trial detention is a form of torture yeah and japan does that as well is what i mean yeah they, they do mean, it up that's to what we do here i think it's legal up to 28 days which is still better than the american system because pre-trial detention can be once <laughs> permanent years uh yeah. you know Khalif Browder was incarcerated yeah. at Rikers for three years while he awaited trial for stealing a backpack, allegedly. And uh, he was in solitary confinement for 700 days, a three-year period. Yeah. You know, like, they they, they killed him. Like, he, he got out, yeah. uh, but he, uh, you know, unfortunately, he took his own life, and I think there's between what he experienced yeah. while he was incarcerated. There was never any evidence that it, he stole a backpack, by the way. Like, they didn't even... Yeah, no, I wasn't saying... I'm yeah, for the record. Blah, like, blah, blah, blah. literally, 
straight up, it was for a backpack. Even if he had, it's ridiculous. But like yeah. he had not. There was no evidence whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, I I think yeah, pretrial detention is like, yeah, and they can detain you before they know if you actually did anything for like twenty eight days in Japan. Yeah, which is why they always say like if you're visiting and they like suspect you of doing a crime, just say you did the crime instead of like trying to fight it because usually like that's the quickest way to get out of any issue what yeah it's so, weird so obviously it's not like murder you know what i mean they're not like oh you did a murder like you have to go through the proper process but if it's like a minor like a petty crime or right. some shit well murder's not really like a big deal you know on one yeah true <laughs> Yeah, also, like, murder, very cool as far as crimes goes, you know? It is sort of the most badass of crimes. Yeah, I agree. You know, as defense attorneys say, it's just an assault without a complaining witness. You're going to be... Okay, so you're going to... So, uh, as, a, as a public defender, you are probably, like, the most, the most normal of lawyers... The most, no, that's not true at all. No, I think like it, it's the most palatable to me, at least. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, yeah. like, I, like what you do is you defend people who don't have money to hire or, or retain counsel, and you're you're doing it in in you know criminal situations where like they would literally their detention would be significantly worse. Oftentimes, how many how many what percentage of like your your clients I guess are was that is that the I say clients? Okay, what percentage of your clients are like you know arrested over petty shit like lawyer? or like homelessness well, so like i don't like, want to get into my client specifically but speaking about it generally the vast majority of arrests that occur in the united states like the we're talking more than like 75 percent are for misdemeanors yeah. you know what i mean and the way that most people interface with the police in the united states is like on the street uh like like in their car and on the high that so most of it is petty right and i think that's also a misconception the reporting on it by the media in various capacities and then also like politicians you know, using it cynically to get points from, from people to say like, crime's out of control, you're unsafe, we need to be tough on crime. And, but yeah, it's a lot of petty stuff. But the thing is like, I think it's really important to, like we can make those distinctions for the purposes of like talking about it and understanding this. But in the, with the idea of abolition, we should be careful because there are still a lot of people that are, that there are still a lot of violent crimes that happen uh, where people are incarcerated for those okay, things. You're, you're trying to, sorry, you're okay, trying to get okay, in a okay, debate. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're, you're no, trying, no, 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 you're no, trying no. to get in a debate mode no, right I'm now. Not getting, no, no, I'm not I in can debate see mode. It. I'm not in debate fucking, mode. I'm not in debate mode. lawyers, bro. I'm not you, in debate mode. You invite them onto I'm not the stream. in debate mode. Okay, immediately he's just like dropping I'm out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We we can. We and I, and I do want to talk to you about that inevitably. Before we get started on on debates that, you know, Alex immediately went lawyer mode. No, I was just sorry. Sometimes I the thing is if you just let me talk, I'm just going to talk. Objection. Yeah. Okay, good. 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 <laughs> is that good? What the fuck no, is this? No, these are old. Don't look at my tweets. It's crazy what people let Hassan get away with just because he's handsome and tall. Once a guy fucked the crease <laughs> between my thigh and labia thinking he was in my vagina. And when he finished, he asked if I got off. I had to break it to him that he just t fucked my leg. I this didn't is what know. I think of when men act like they're equipped to make laws about women's bodies. I didn't bodies. know I was going to come on stream at that time. Why didn't you guys show me this beforehand? I would not have let <laughs> this man into my home, okay? Um. Anyway. Oh, don't, 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 don't. What is this? There's only one way to determine if Hassan is a true comrade. He has to kiss me on the lips. What the fuck is this? What, what is going on? You guys didn't show me any of this stuff beforehand, Sorry. and now I have him right here. Well, why are you pulling it up? They're doing this on purpose. Yeah, of course they're going to. No, I'm not. Maybe a donation goal. We'll figure it out. Are you writing that down? Yeah, I'm going to write that down. Yeah. No, I just did a new tweet. Oh, you did? Yeah. What the fuck? Wait, I thought you were writing the fundraiser goal. <laughs> What the fuck? You had that ready? What is yeah, that? I did. Wait, you literally had that ready? <laughs> yeah, I did. What the fuck? I thought it might come up. That's insane. How does that work? So, like, you you, you fucked up. Instead of going what to, like, mean? corporate law, you, you became a public defender. Ew, you're fucking broke. What's up with that? Yeah. How do you pay for your student loans? Well, I'm lucky because I am that I'm in. Uh -huh. If I do it for like 10 years. George Soros? George Soros, yeah. It's called okay. the George Soros program. He cuts all my checks. It's called, um, yeah, Release the Criminals Foundation by George Soros. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, when I went to law school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Lawyer. Also, if anyone's thinking about becoming a lawyer, they should read Dean Spade's essay. Like, don't go read this essay. It's really good. Um, because a lot of the most kind of like radical people uh, who go to law school get caught 
caught up in kind of the machinery. And truthfully, even a public defender is like a noble cog in a way, right? Like I'm still inside of this machine that is just like constantly crushing people and, and I can try to do my best to help, but it's still doing that every single day and that's what it's designed to do. But when I went to law school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I think because of honestly like propaganda and everything, people think prosecutors are like really cool. Like every TV show and like Law & Order, which Law & Order, I'm going to be honest, like does kind of rock as a show but very I, woke but like in woke. a very liberal way <laughs> it's not yeah it's yeah, it's it's sure, woke okay. in a liberal way where it's like criminals deserve to go in perma jail all the time and they're yeah. always bad and wrong <laughs> whereas like i like the simplicity of it uh, but like but then also like you know they're like addressing trans issues and whatnot but yeah for it's, your grandma to watch yeah. which is and what also it is. it's got uh it's got iced tea which is huge i'm a big iced tea fan yeah i uh, love his twitter but yeah i i didn't know what i wanted to do and then i started working for a former public defender on this thing called the mass incarceration project at the center for popular democracy which is funded by george soros <laughs> That's it. Oh, dude. Oh, of course. Got him. We um, fucking got him. All right, yeah, that's right. enough. No, we got him. You're under arrest, sir. But I worked for this program and they were writing policy to overturn the 1994 crime bill, but like at a city level. Uh huh. So you're anti Brandon, which is fucked up. Okay. I'm an yeah. We're pro Brandon. Yes, I'm anti On the broadcast. And, uh, I realized, I guess the main thing that changed was I realized that everything I was doing was part of the machinery. Like, I was learning how the system functioned. I wasn't learning how to like take it apart and I didn't want to be a part of that in that way. So I felt like one of the least harmful things I could do was be a public defender. But there are a lot of other great jobs that lawyers like immigration attorneys, labor lawyers uh, for the, you know, employees. Like there are lots of people who do great, great work besides public defenders who deserve, you know, their recognition. First, we're going to look at some of the other some of the other TikTok lawyers and ask Alex why he's not like them because <laughs> um, they make good content whereas That's you right. make That's bad right. content. Their content is great. Dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's the big difference. Everybody knows it. What about this? This guy would probably defend me. Court with my client, we absolutely crushed his case. Look, this was a second time DUI. <laughs> yeah, he was leaving the Rufus Du Soul concert at the Hollywood Bowl. Had some drinks. Had a dirty dog, a delicious glizzy. Yep. And uh, <laughs> allegedly, he got behind the uh, wheel allegedly. and crashed into right. another car with an oh, angry yeah. person in it. Yeah, that's really fucked up that that angry person was angry. <laughs> when Look, the guy was angry already. Yeah, car, yeah, yeah. In a bad attitude. His lawyer was at the concert too? What the fuck? Who called the police. Mm -hmm. Now, it was at issue whether or not he was really the driver or if it was his girlfriend driving. Oh, the police never even asked him if he drove his own car Dope. and he was just standing there talking to the police doing the field sobriety test so pause never it. even asked he, him so it's like a control issue yeah so like a situation yeah there's like limited duis are tough for disposal that's why. yeah you know i got arrested for a dui in it does not in, surprise me at all in california <laughs> but i mean uh, i fucking what is it called nolo prosec nolo contendere no 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 prosecution whatsoever no no court date oh they dropped it so they just dismissed it yeah, because the fucking assholes. I mean, it was kind of good that it happened. This is a long time ago. I talked about this so many times. Uh, everyone knows, but everyone is always surprised whenever I talk about it. For the like, I'm talking about it for the first time. But yeah, no low prosecuti. Prosecui, oh, okay, okay. So what happened is uh, I actually wasn't above the legal limit, but they made me fucking blow on it like 11 times until okay. I could get one. And then the blood work showed that I was like, it yeah. never went anywhere. But they made me do, they made me do the fucking uh, field sobriety test like multiple times. The lieutenant came in, he made me do it again. And then they were like, you're definitely drunk. You're definitely drunk. And then they were like, here, blow on this. And I blew on it. And they made me blow on it like fucking 10 times. Yeah. And then they arrested me. And then I was like, all right, let's do the fucking blood work then. And then they took me to the hospital. Blood work doesn't show that I'm over the limit. So they, I guess, they never even informed me on this as well. That was the most like gruesome, fucked up, like 10 months where, as I was like waiting if I had a court date or not. And I go to court to see if I even have a court date. And they're like, yeah, you're good. That's crazy. Yeah. And I didn't even have a lawyer, like none of that shit. And I was, cause I was broke as fuck. I was just like terrified. I probably would have gotten a public defender. Yeah. But yeah. 
Uh, I did all of that, but that was many, many years ago, but it was good because like, I've talked about this before, like I, I did have a problem and uh, I had uh, allegedly definitely driven drug. I just luckily had not done that that night, but I went sober after that. It's good. Yeah. I like, you know, I, I really had to get my shit in order after that basically, which was a really fucked up thing. And alcohol is very bad. Uh, I mean, obviously drink responsibly, but not good. Uh, anyway, I'm glad you're knee. Yeah, uh, it would have been better if I hadn't, but... Well, you know what I mean. I mean, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, I, I am I am now uh, an advocate for drinking and driving. So, like, because, <laughs> like, think about it this way. Most car accidents, sober, sober drivers, uh-huh. overwhelming majority so... are sober drivers. Okay. And, unfortunately, we don't have any data on, like, how many drunk drivers who don't get caught successfully get home without an accident. Oh, actually. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I think people drive better when drunk. Sure. That's what everyone says. Yeah. Until they're <laughs> wrapped around a telephone pole and they're with their Mustang. But, you know, that's worst ways to go out. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, you. <laughs> as long as you get your practice in, I think like, you know, drunk driving should be fine. Okay. That's I my uh, advocacy. respectfully disagree, but I hear well, you. I'm not very public defender of you. Okay. I'm just saying. This guy, on the other hand, he'd get me off. <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't defend. You have know, you, have you like defended? I don't know if I'm allowed to ask you this, but have you defended someone where you're like, I don't want to defend this guy, like his vibes are off? No. No? no. Never? I. It's an interesting question, and it's one that I feel like I get all the time in different different ways. Um, it's like, oh, what if somebody, what if you know someone's guilty? Well, you can't. But the thing is, like, I, I don't care really about any about is, like, representing the person to the best of my ability and being a zealous advocate for them. And also, like, recognizing that this the overarching system is so messed up and hurts so many people in different ways that it's so much bigger than like the nation. And also everybody's entitled to a legal defense. Like, you know, not yeah. just like from the constitution, but typical just, lawyer speak, by the way, guys, What? I mean like everybody, you know, this is how, this is how they get you. Okay. This is how, this is how defense uh, attorneys <laughs> fucking <laughs> yeah, that's right. get the, you know, they, this is you know, how I get you know, in your head. You know, yeah, you know who else said that? Alan Dershowitz. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The number homie. one, the yeah. goat, the goat, the goat. He is, he's gotten off so many people but (laughs) it's true he did yeah well alan dershowitz aside um i mean i think there's a lot of ways to look at it and it's like representing people uh who are accused of doing something like especially heinous to use the law and order speak it ensures that all of everybody kind of strong and because you want to make sure that those like you know that that wall is in place uh, that they're actually getting respected, which they so often aren't, right? And it's like I'd rather I'd rather ten guilty people go free of jail. Damn, you heard it here. That's <laughs> why he's a George Soros a guy, dude. Look at this. He said he wants to get off guilty people exclusively pro crime we're right. pro crime also so. the idea like you know guilt it's just like it's a really myop myopic way of looking at it and i want to encourage you and uh, and everybody in chat also to try to get away from that and think about it a little bit differently in terms of um every time i would represent someone when i have represented someone i get their entire case history you know like i know their whole history their rap sheet and like every single person There's a story behind who they are and how they got there and the things that happened in their life. And like, you won't believe the things that you'll hear of like what people have experienced. Like obviously these horrible things and these traumas that have impacted their whole life. And when people go through those traumas and they also live in poverty and they also don't have resources and they don't have healthcare and they don't have housing, it starts to become, of course, this is what happened, you know? Yeah. So I think like it's too small to be like that guy did something really bad. So like, why are you representing that guy? You know, it's like outside of that and the bigger picture of it as well. 